So can anyone explain to me why we spend millions and millions of dollars on educating about drug prevention and don't take drugs because they're bad for you and allowing parents to worry themselves sick about will my child get into drugs because they're mixed in the bad company? They don't have to worry at all. People who are addicted to drugs are addicted to drugs because of their pain. So they're not going to do it because they're in bad company. It's just because they've suffered some trauma. And isn't that an easier thing to solve and heal from? Let's take an issue that the last two speakers have both talked about, mental illness. Across a research, um, an academic search over the whole of research into this area in 2005, 69.9% of psychiatric inpatients with serious psychotic disorders, well, you've probably guessed it, yes, all of them had suffered from childhood trauma. Bipolar disorder was mentioned. 82 to 86 percent of people with bipolar disorder have suffered from some form of childhood trauma. Border personality disorder, 90 percent have suffered. Then let's talk about the one that we've been millions, 79 million dollars last year spent on raising awareness of, depression. How many people who suffer from de depression do you think have suffered from childhood trauma or abuse? 80% research tells us. And how many of you here have heard one word about what's happened in your childhood and that might help you to heal from your depression or anxiety? So what are we doing? Raising awareness so that we can feed the pharmaceutical companies, so that people can take more medication? Because after all, in Australia, we take more antidepressants than any other country in the world. I work with survivors of childhood trauma, and I know from our independent research that four years after just a five-day program, there is a highly statistically significant, I can never say that word, highly statistically significant reduction in depression. Six months after a five-day program, a 45% reduction in measured serious mental illness. So what's, what's the silence? Why don't, why don't we talk about this? Why are we not allowed to acknowledge childhood trauma? Why are we not encouraged to heal from childhood trauma when we know because of neuroplasticity that this is possible? Let me just cover one other area of, of deep human sadness, an area that we all care passionately about, and when it hits us, it really, really hurts. And I'm talking about suicide, how agonizing it is. The young women I work with at Heal for Life, I have one common complaint when they go to hospital having tried to kill themselves. Nobody ever asks why. And if they did, they would get the same answer from all those young people. Because of my internal pain from my childhood, because I think I'm worthless and worth nothing, because no one cares about the fact that I've been abused. And if I look at um, Esperance, which in the Central Coast runs a wonderful suicide prevention service, Tony Humphrey wrote to me and said, 90%, around 90% of all the women who have attempted suicide, who I have worked with, have either suffered from sexual abuse or child abuse of some type, and a slightly lower percentage for the men. So have any of you ever seen anything about suicide prevention, which has talked about what happened in your childhood, has there been a campaign which has said, ask a friend when they're down, what happened in your childhood? Talk to me about your childhood. Because that is very, very likely to have an impact on your current mental well-being. So maybe for a moment, you, some of you may be thinking, well, what, she keeps talking about childhood trauma and abuse. What actually is it? Childhood trauma covers a huge spectrum. It covers abandonment, death of a parent, alcoholic parents, childhood sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Um, it covers, of course, natural, natural disasters. What happens when trauma occurs, trauma is more emotion than the brain can deal with. Trauma, at the time it is happening, the person, in an age-appropriate way, thinks that their life is threatened. And the brain uh, reacts to this trauma and develops differently, which is why childhood trauma has a much bigger impact on behavior later and, and the whole way the brain operates later in life. Trauma cannot be remembered. 
Let me give you an example of this, and that's because the conscious brain shuts down um, during trauma. Uh, you may remember, or you may not, Princess Di's bodyguard, after the, when they were trying to find out what actually happened in the accident, uh, they hypnotized, the police, French police hypnotized the man so that he could remember, so that part of his brain could be unlocked, so that he could say what actually happened at that moment of impact. So I suppose my great wish is that this silence could be broken. And I have hope that this silence can be broken. Because 40 years ago, there was the big C. There was cancer. No one talked about cancer. We didn't mention it. It was just, they've got the big C. But now, wonderfully, everyone talks about cancer. We know people who've suffered from cancer. We talk to them, we encourage them, we love them, and they tell us immediately when they have cancer. Can you imagine how it would be if in my lifetime, this is my longing, that people talk about childhood trauma? That it's okay to say, I had a terrible childhood, all these things happened. And the other person listening says, let me support you. Let me help you in your healing. Let me help you work through what has happened from the development of your brain because you suffered from childhood trauma. Wouldn't that be a better world for all of us? Because what is creating this silence? Is it embarrassment? Is it shame? Are we shamed by the stigma because we're not allowed to know when there's a rape victim the name of the rape victim, as if in some way that rape was their fault? Why is it that all the concentration is on stranger danger and church abuse when that's about 1% of all abuse? Abuse happens in the home and it happens to families. But every single one of you here can help change that. If each one of you helped me in my big idea, if each one of you who has actually suffered from childhood trauma says, I have no reason to be ashamed of it, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault that my childhood was not perfect, and I deserve love and support. If those of you, when you meet someone who's addicted from gambling, alcohol, drugs, if you say to them, hey, has anyone ever discussed with you what happened in your childhood? Do you think you might like to heal from your childhood? If only with anyone with a mental illness you could say to them, not just, which is a wonderful campaign, but are you okay, but hey, do you want to talk about what happened in your childhood? Because I understand an awful lot of people with mental illness have suffered from some form of childhood trauma. Talk to me about it. Every single one of you could do that. Every single one of you can help me achieve my big idea. Every single one of you can get involved with the Heal for Life Foundation and help us to make this world a happy place. And I'll leave you with one final thought. I wonder what would have happened to this world if someone had healed Adolf Hitler from his much-acknowledged child abuse. Thank you.